I wasted a lot of time and energy on this car trying to get it fixed and I just could not find it. The battery, after about 30 minutes of driving, something was heating up and the battery would drain in about 10 minutes completely dead. So naturally, when that happens, the first thing you want to check is the battery itself. If the battery is good, which it was, then you check the alternator. I got the alternator checked. He said the alternator was draining. So I got a new alternator. Put the new alternator in, and it was the same problem. After about a half hour heating up, uh, the battery would drain. Naturally, I, I checked all the relays, all the switches, all the fuses. Everything that would normally be a battery drain was checked, and I could not find it. So at that point, I'm thinking, well, maybe they sold me a bad alternator. Took that alternator back, exchanged it for a new one, put that one in, and it was still doing the same thing. The battery would drain after about a half hour. At that point, I took it to an okay mechanic, and he was swamped, and he didn't have a whole time to look at it. And when he did look at it, he couldn't find it. So he recommended a very expensive mechanic with all the diagnosis equipment and all that. And they wanted $100 just to diagnose the car. I wasn't willing to pay it, so I got back under the hood of the car and continued digging for this. And the only thing I could think of that I have not eliminated was that the starter solenoid was heating up and stuck on the on position, and that's what was causing the battery drain, or that's what I thought. So I started dropping the starter out of the car, and on this car, that's not a very easy job. You have to do a lot, including taking the shroud off and, and taking this cross member off, and I'll show you that when we get to it. This car has a dual fan, those fans have to come out and they have uh, connectors on them just like this. You see the red piece on the left side, just push that to the right and then press down where I'm pointing right there and pull it out while you're pressing it down. Sometimes you gotta wiggle them out a little bit, just like that. And that's how those fan connectors come off. That's the EGR valve, but it's the same thing.
this point in the video, I'm still looking for the shirt in this car at the same time I'm getting ready to drop the starter. And here's the ground bolt right here. This one is the hardest one to get to, and that's why we had to move things out of the way, like the fan, the radiator hose, and other stuff, too. We also have to move that cap right there because the exhaust is in the way and those lines are in the way from a wrench maneuvering on top of that bolt. And that cap is just one 8 millimeter bolt going all the way through it so you don't have to take any clips or off. Just loosen up that bolt and pull it right out. So here again we get a look at the ground bolt and that one's tough to get to. So we're going to come back and remove that cap. But before that I want to jack up the car and go up underneath and see if there's any visual signs of that solenoid being burned up. And while we're under there, I'll show you the other two starter bolts. The solenoid's not burned up on the outside, but you never can tell. You can't really see what's going on in there. So we're going to swing to the driver's side and take a look at the two sideways bolts going into the starter and hold it on. And as you know, there's one more up top. three starter bolts holding the starter in. One of them uh, has a welded nut, which is actually a stud. And on the outside of that nut, we have a smaller nut that holds the wires together for the battery ground. And some cars have other grounds also connected to this. Most cars are grounded to the frame of the car. This one, this is a Chrysler Town and Country, and it's grounded to the starter. This one has two ground wires to it. One is a negative battery cable, and frankly, I don't know what the other one is. But this clip here was broke, so the wire to that was tied in to the battery cable and this clip right here was not big enough so somebody tried to squeeze it in they did not crimp it they did not use electrical tape to hold it in they didn't do anything so the battery ground was just hanging off of there and this ground wire was just kind of wrapped around it and also hanging loose so when the car vibrated it was getting a terrible ground and both of those wires were heating up so while my plan was to drop the starter out and check the solenoid, uh, the first bolt I took off the starter was this one, and I didn't even have to take the bolt out. I just took the ground wire nut off, and I could see my problem. You could also smell the problem. The wires were melting. And the end of the battery cable was all black and burnt. So, yep, the battery cable fell right off of there, and so did that other ground that was tied to it. It's unbelievable. first thing I had to do is cut off both ends of the wires, both of them were burnt. And then I had to strip both wires to allow enough room into the connector and be able to crimp it nice and tight, tape it up with electrical tape, and then bolt them back onto the stud individually. The battery cable that was on there was too small and it was for a lawnmower, so I had one laying in my shed that was actually made for a car and would fit perfectly. I just had to crimp it down and tape it up real good with electrical tape. And then I got another connector for the smaller wire. I think it's 10 gauge wire. 
Now, on the smaller connector that I had laying around, the hole was not big enough to go around the stud, so I had to ream this hole out right there with a rat tail file on a drill. Well, now it's time to bolt it all back up and put it back together and check it out. I can tell you right now it works great. Everything was fine. No more battery drain. So I hope I helped you out. I hope I saved you a little bit of time and aggravation. And uh, when you can't find the problem, check your battery ground. project is a water pump for a 3.3 Chrysler. 